Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today what we're going to do is a continuation of the uh, two-way passive <laughs> crossover. And uh, we're going to look at the body plot here. And what we're going to do is, in the previous video, we looked at the impedance that the amplifier sees while it sweeps across the, you know, the audio band. And we also did the body plot for the treble and the bass um, outputs. So what we're going to do this time is I'm going to take the signal from the GWN stack, put it through this Class D amplifier, and uh, this is the one with GAN FETs that I did some videos on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing we did before, but this time with an amplified signal, okay? So the difference is with a small signal, say two volts, like two and a half volts I did before, uh, you know, these inductors and capacitors and that, the parasitics, like the DC resistance of the inductor, the inductor, whether or not it's going to saturate, that kind of stuff, all those things don't really come into play because it's small signal. Um, so the parts look more ideal. Um, and maybe not so because maybe the thing's designed to have power signals go through. But when you have power signals go through, then the inductance changes slightly, uh, the DC resistance comes into play a little bit, the ESR, the caps, comes into play a little bit. So uh, that's the way the music's going to be sent through the crossover. So why not test that way, right? So we're going to do a power test, and we're going to sweep it that way. And I think what we're going to do is put about 60, 70 watts there, okay? It's a 150 watt uh, crossover, but I think with the setup I have, I can do about 60, 70 watts and have a nice, good, you know, clean signal. All right, so let's do that. And by the way, we're gonna use four ohm resistors. I'm gonna bring the camera over here. We're gonna show a close up of the setup, talk about it, and then we're gonna go ahead and do this, the test. Hey, by the way, uh, I want to thank my patrons for their support and all you guys for watching the videos. That all supports me. Uh, you know, if you like the video, thumbs up. That really helps too. And commenting, all those things helps uh, the channel. And uh, the Patreon thing, if you guys don't know how that works, it's kind of like subscribing to, you know, anything else uh, where you can donate, you know, a dollar. You know, I think it starts at a dollar a month. So. I was going to put some extra content, do some things for my patrons. As a matter of fact, I want to offer some design services, things like that. You know, if there's questions that the patrons have, you know, I'll, I'll try to answer those first, okay? But I try to answer all the questions on, you know, all the comments I'm given. But uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I announced in the last video I'm going to give this Fluke 27 away. And so we're going to do that. And... I'm going to give it away to a Patreon to kind of support the Patreons for supporting me, all right? And I have another really cool item I'm going to give away uh, that I'm going to talk about in another video. But, you know, I've got a few multimeters, and I found a few more when I was kind of going through my garage. So I am going to occasionally give away a multimeter, and uh, I think that's how I'm going to kind of give back to my Patreons, <laughs> all right? So, and, you know, we'll see. Uh, I'll try to do some general giveaways, too. But, anyway, uh, for right now, I'm going to start off with the Patreons. And let me know what you think, how I should do that. All right? Okay. Hey, thanks for watching. Let's jump over here and see what this thing does. Okay, so here is the setup. My 2 4-ohm, 200-watt loads connected to the tweeter and the woofer outputs here on this crossover. This is the output of the Class D amplifier coming to the input. And on the input we have a differential probe. We want differential because the ground on the output is not the same as the ground on the input. And the ground on the input is coming from the scope. So we want to separate our scope probe's grounds from our input ground. So using a differential probe, channel 1, and using this differential probe on channel 2. So this guy's the mix sig over there. He's set at times 50. And this this guy right here is coming over here 
to uh, to the Pentec DP25, and it's set on type 20. Okay, and the mix sig is powered by USB cable going up to the scope. Using this meter to read the voltage on the plus input, so we have plus and minus, and this one's on the minus. And then we have our hand tech current meter reading the current going in. So we're going to use this for our impedance measurement, and then otherwise we'll be using our differential probes. So we got these nice kind of heavy test leads coming from the output, and the input and power leads. And this is our EPC Class D amplifier. Okay, so let me come over here and I'll start cranking up the voltage and you'll see some LEDs. There's a blue LED saying there's power and the red one saying the power's not high enough. Once I get up to about 20 volts, the red should go to, yep, they turn off. Okay, there's 20. I just keep on bringing it up. And over here, there's some green LEDs if you can see them. Let's see, I'll turn the light away so you can see the LEDs maybe. All right, so that's the setup. I, I need to use this potentiometer down here on the on the class D, if you can see it right there. So I'm setting that potentiometer to get the max power I can before I see clipping and stuff. And with my input voltage and so on, I'm, I'm able to get, I think I'm getting about four amps um, across the frequency band with no trouble. So that's what I'm using for my test. And just to verify that, I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm using a second scope. Let's scan over here. And we got this guy. So I'm using the Siglent. All right, we're zoomed in a little bit more better on the Siglent. So I'm using channel one with the Handtech Current Pro. It's a one meg and uh, coupling DC. I could couple that to AC, but I'm gonna leave it DC just if there's an offset, then I know that I need a degauss no bandwidth and set for 10x so then i put it on units for current just so it reads out current okay so let's go ahead and start the uh measurement see so i can uh, calibrate my max power so that looks like about four amps and right now we're at 71 hertz so just watching it go across the frequency band and that's also kind of giving me a nice indication that the impedance looking into the crossover is staying pretty flat because that current has not changed too much and the amplitude here hasn't shifted too much so it looks like you know that's another way to test the flatness of your gain is just to watch your current and now you can see is there you go see and that's another way to do it guys when that voltage or that current drops to 0 0.7 you know that that's your crossover point now now you can see it kind of going back up that's another way to check for your crossovers just to watch your signal like that okay guys so first i'm going to go through this setup and what we're going to do is we're going to look at channel one and i've got the differential probe coming into that and so that's what we're going to look at voltage and it's a 20x setting and we're going to couple ac uh, full bandwidth and yeah so I think that looks good it's a voltage current it's a 10x we're gonna use the 10x setting and I'll just put it on current there and it doesn't really matter but you know I mean it shows current down here and all that kind of stuff instead of voltage but since we're gonna be looking at voltage plot it won't matter so let's go to applications and I'm already set up in applications. Normally, it would have came up with all these applications. Then I would have came over here and selected frequency response analysis and confirm that. And then we come down here and then the setup menu. Uh, channel two is going to be the input. That's the current. Channel one's uh, the source. Okay, so channel. So the, so it's output divided by input, and so it's voltage divided by current is resistance or impedance in this case. And we're going to go 30 points, I think, enough. So I think we're already run it. Now I could show you the reference circuit, but we're not set up this way because we're reading impedance. So we're set up a little different than here. We have the signal coming into an amplifier, out of the amplifier into here. And then we're actually using channel channel one 
to read the voltage and we're using channel 2 to come over here and read the current. So we're not reading the output, we're reading uh, voltage divided by current. So we're looking at input impedance into the device under test. So we want to see what the amplifier is seeing as it's driving this, okay? So we're just going to come down here. Well, let's finish the setup and let's go to generator setup. It's 20 hertz to 100k and 600 millivolts. That's a good signal. And then I use my uh, um, my pot on the class D amplifier to get the, the gain, which gives us about, it's going to be about, I'm going to show you how we're going to calculate this, or how we can look at this, but um, I'm going to show you how we monitor this, but it's going to be about uh, 16, it's be, so this 600 millivolts is going to turn into a signal that when does giving us around six, just over 60 watts, close to 65 watts, okay? And that would be enough for a good power signal, I think. So let's go ahead and run this. All right, guys, so I turn on the amplifier. The power supply is going. So you probably hear this, the fan on the power supply kicking in. And we're ready to hit the, the go button. Let's do it. Whoops, you know what? Before I do that, I'm turning it off. I'm gonna, since I've been here for a minute, I'm just going to degauss the current probe. Make sure we get a good reading there. And then hook it back up. Okay, let's do it now. All right, so it's coming in. The gain is blue. Just over 12 dBs, the phase is in red. It's right at zero. Zero phase, so that's looking pretty darn good so far. It almost seems too good. <laughs> okay, so the impedance is looking really flat right now. You can see the waveforms up here, the voltage and current. You can see how they're in phase. They're right on top of each other. Now, when you see it kind of pop and they separate, that's because it kind of switches from one frequency band to another internally, and it just takes a moment for the scope to settle in. Okay, the phase is kind of separating a little bit. Okay, the gain kind of did that little peak like it did in the last video. All right, guys, so that's looking really flat all the way out 1K, about 12 dBs. And then kind of ramps up to about 20, drops back down to about, I don't know, 15 dBs. And that's 20 kilohertz right there, so it's just 16, 17 dBs there. So, yeah, the uh, impedance is looking fairly flat, except for this little peaking right there at 2, 3, 4, about 4, 4 and a half, 5K. Okay, now let's go look at the body plot of the, let's start with the woofer. All right, guys, I kind of zoomed in on the scope control so you can see. I've got to take off the current probe for this one. I'm going to put it down on the other scope. And what we're going to do is put the other differential probe in channel 2. So let's go back and let's go set up. Okay, so the output is channel 2. So we want the output on channel 2. So it'll be output over input is gain. Channel 1 is the input. That's our source. Okay, now there we go. I think we're ready to hit the run. Let's do it. Let's zoom in again. All right, guys, so I just hit the run button, and we should be ready to go. Whoops. You know what? We're going to have to stop this. You know what I forgot to do? Here. I forgot to go to channel 2 and set this to 50x for that differential. And let's go to voltage. So let's change that to 50x. Yeah, if you ever kind of forget to do that, 
you'll see your gain measurements being off by a certain factor, in this case factor 5. That would have been a giveaway once we ran it. All right, let's do it. Application button, run. Okay, again, we see our scope setting up the frequencies up here. They're right on top of each other, so we expect the gain and phase to look like zero. See, there's our blue zero gain and our red zero phase. So this is our, this is our woofer output. So we'd expect it to be here, and then, like last time, right around 2.5K or something, it dropped down. All right, the phase is dropping a little bit right now. Not a lot, but it's kind of looking like it did last time. Wow, from right now, it looks a lot like it did without power signal. So, and it could be just because it's a single pole filter and it's got large parts, so they're kind of ideal. So, let's take a look at this. Let's go to measure, turn on the cursor. Okay, so up here, yeah, we're about 0.67. Yeah, that's pretty close to what we saw last time. So we want to come to 3.67. See where that, okay, there's 3.7. Yep, we're right in between again. Now this time it is about 2.8K. I think it was a little bit lower frequency last time. So yeah, the inductance did kick up a little bit and it's crossing over a little bit further here, just a little bit. Uh, wow, that's pretty cool. And then, you know, last time it dropped down, yeah, right down here, it's around 76 degrees. I think last time it was around, I wanted to say 80. We'll have to go back and look at the curve, right? But, geez, guys, uh, still looks like, let's see, if we go right there, 10K, at 10K, we're about... 12 dBs and 20K. Try to get close. Okay, 19, I think that's where it was last time. So 17. Yeah, so you know what? That's only about 6 dBs. So it's not 12 dB. So yeah, it looks a lot like it did with the uh, low power uh, with the last video. So that didn't change much. Let's go look at the treble. I have a feeling that's gonna change more since there's two poles. Okay, I'm moving the scope probe over, and let's go ahead and measure that thing. Run. Okay, now right now it looks like they're out of phase, right? Oh, but this is low frequency, so yeah, we don't really care too much. This is the, uh, okay, it's coming in right around 47 dBs. Phase is at 174. So this is well out of uh, amplification where we can hear. It's, it's down there a ways. Okay, just crossed over 100 hertz. All right, we're starting to uh, ramp up a little bit. Our gain is around 37, still down there in the mud. Okay, now it's ramping up fast. Wow. Okay, that phase really changed from the last video. That phase last time, remember it kind of had a camel's back? This time it stayed up and then dropped down. So. That phase uh, really changed this time, and this looks like, let's get the cursors over here, whoops, 
Okay, let's put one cursor right there. And one right there. So that's about an octave right there. Double the frequency. And the gain changed about 9.4 dBs. So not quite 12, but definitely more than 6. And also, I'm at 1.9 and 9, so I'm not quite double. So well, I'm pretty close, actually. So yeah, it's um, might not be the flattest part of the curve here. Let me move to another spot, see if I can get a better reading. We'll try 2 kilohertz to 3 kilohertz. If I can. Can't quite hit them. But I'm pretty, well, I'm about 2, so this guy needs to be about 4. Okay, that's about an octave, about double the frequency. And it's about 12.7 dB. So yeah, it's just that it wasn't, it's, you know, still kind of bending up where we saw before. Or up here, it's kind of the flatter spot. And then it's going to start rounding off again. But you know what? It looks like if I bring this up here, this is about 0.7. So if I come down here to 3.7, right about there, uh, it's 7.6 kilohertz. I think that changed a little bit. I think our crossover has changed just a touch, but... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think that's changed a little bit, but yeah, the phase is the thing that changed the most. Right down here, it's close to zero. It's about five degrees, and it's kind of flat-ish. Well, this is also, here, we only care about 20 kilohertz, so yeah, from 20 kilohertz up, yeah, the phase is kind of dropping from, wow, it's going through quite a change through there. All right, guys, so that's... That's what we get with power. Hey guys, so what do you think of that? Um, you know, it, it really, on the base side, it didn't look a whole lot different. I think the, you know, the cutoff point just moved slightly. Uh, kind of to be expected. There's only a single coil. Yep, I did pop it out of its little case. Next video, I'm going to talk about how to design this little dude. And we're going to look at this guy, okay? So that's what we're going to do in the next video. I'm going to put micro cap too. We're going to do a simulation. So, and I'm going to put that video out very quickly. Uh, hopefully within a day after this video gets released. Which, you know. <laughs> which if I release this tomorrow, it'll be the next day. So, yeah. We're going to take a close look at this. I'm going to talk about uh, this crossover. The specs. And... Do a simulation, all right? But yeah, the tweeter did look different. The the and you know maybe in the simulation we'll see uh, some differences. We'll have to make the parts non-ideal in the simulation. We'll kind of do both. So that'll be kind of tutorial as far as crossover design or you know filter design in general. So you know audio stuff, power supply stuff. A lot of this stuff is you know the ideas behind it. You know crossover. So. Uh, yeah, I, maybe that's why I like audio, because I don't know. But anyway, all right, guys. Hey, hope you liked the video. Thumbs up if you did. Appreciate that. And uh, thanks, Patreons. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And okay, so, and we'll see you next time, all right? Okay, thanks for watching.